These next steps are a bit complicated, but only need to be done once to get the file server officially running. Again, I'm using Ninefront, and this will be a bit different from Legacy Plan 9 systems. The most noticeable difference is that Legacy Plan 9 uses a two-part file system called Fossil and Venti. It works in a similar way to the cached worm file system in Ninefront. There is a cache partition where you interact with the files as usual, and a snapshot storage that can be mounted to retrieve backups. However, the specific commands will be different between the two. Internal to Ninefront, the commands between CWFS and HJFS are also slightly different. Both are covered in Ninefront's uh, frequently questioned answers, and I'll have a link to that below. This video will be a little tricky to follow. There are a lot of moving parts, and they all need to be done correctly for everything to work, as this will be a combination authorization and file server. We will need to set up both those systems. Authorization will handle checking the passwords, and the file system will make sure the users have access to the correct files. First thing that needs to be done is to set a host owner for the system. The Plan 9 developers did away with a root user because it was had obvious security issues. Instead, each system has a designated host owner. The host owner has ultimate power over any processes running on the system it owns, so the host owner can kill processes and access pretty much all the hardware. In the case of the file server, the host owner does not have unlimited access to the files normally. Only in the special case where the host owner boots the console mode uh, with authorization disabled. I've noted the NVRAM partition before. This is a small piece of storage called non-volatile RAM for historical reasons. Uh, and it holds a password token for the host owner. This allows the system to boot with authorization without needing to enter a password at the boot prompt. To be sure the system uses it, I will add it to the plan9.ini uh, file. Some systems will do this automatically, but I just want to be sure, so let's mount the 9FAT partition. And here we can specify exactly where to get the NVRAM partition from. And this can also be set as a file in the 9FAT partition too. W to write and Q to quit. And now we'll reboot the system so that takes effect. All right, now I've rebooted the system with the NVRAM partition specified, and the next step is to write to it. So to write to it, the command is auth slash wr key. And the auth ID will be the host owner, which will be Glenda. Uh, in this case, uh, this is asking for a domain name. I'm not running one in my internal network, so I'll just make one up. I'm just gonna call it demo dom. Sex store key is used for another authorization system, and I'm just going to be skipping it for now, so I'll just hit enter and leave it blank. Now I will enter password for Glenda. And that's it. So the next is to add Glenda to the authorization system, and we'll also be adding a regular user too. So first we need to make sure we have access to the keys. So that's auth slash keyfs. And then auth slash, oops, change user. So we'll do one for Glenda here. We'll enter the same password in again. Uh, I'm not bothering with that. Won't bother with an expiration date. And these are if you have like an actual office full of people. There we go. Users and or uh, Glenn is now added as a user. 
and I'll add just a plain regular user, I'll call it demo user. Give them a password. And basically the same options. The next step is to add our new user to the file system. So Glenda automatically gets entered uh, as one of the users on the file system when you do the install. Um, and now we need to add the demo user so that they can also own files. To do that, we will echo a command into the file system's command server. So let's echo new user, the user's name. And then direct that to serve CWFS CMD. All right, so now the new user has been added to the CacheStorm file system. The next step is to edit the network database file to designate this system as the auth and file server. That file is located in lib slash ndb. So let's go there. And the file we want is called local. So let's edit it with Acme here. And down near the bottom here, we have an example that we can use. At the very bottom, we already have a entry that was made during the install for this particular system. So we'll just uh, make a, our own version of this. All right, there, spammed it all in. So this will specify that this demo FS is doing auth and all the other information for this whole network, the IP gateway, uh, my, gate, my router acts like a DNS server, so I have that entered. The demo DOM again as a sort of placeholder for a domain. And then again, specifying the auth server as demo FS and the file server as demo FS. Oops, that should be capitalized. And so we only need to enter in demo FS here because it's already specified down here which particular system is demo FS. And so I will save that with button two on put and then we can exit. Next, we need to do another edit to plan 9.ini. Because of a quirk with CWFS, we need to do two edits. The first is to make a copy of plan9.ini to boot the system up in configure mode to make sure that authorization to the file system is working. And we also need a final plan9.ini configuration so the server boots up normally without any need for interaction. So let's mount the 9fat again. All right, make a copy of the current plan nine. And another one, which we will use later. So for the existing one, the first thing we need to do is change this from the default, which is a terminal, to a CPU server. So that's adding service equals CPU. 
And then to the boot arguments, we'll add a dash C to the drive option for the file system. And this will put it into configure mode. Let's save that. For the new one, we will add an option called dash A, TCP, some stuff, 564. This will tell the system to be listening on TCP port 564 for uh, commands to mount to the file system. This will also be a service CPU. And we will change the boot args to no boot prompt. So it won't ask for us to hit enter. It'll just automatically run it. And we'll put that. So I'm writing both of them now because once the system reboots, the graphical system will be disabled. Uh, so it won't load Rio and I can't edit the files with Acme or Sam. You can use ed, but writing both now and using move to rename them later is easier. So I've rebooted the system now and you can see it's waiting for me to enter the default, which has the dash C. I'll hit enter and it has a config prompt. And at this point I will type no auth says auth is disabled. I'll type that again, no auth. Auth is now enabled. And then type end. And it continues booting the system. And as you can see, there's no Rio now. It's just at a prompt. We'll mount the nine fat partition. And so we will move that plan nine file with the configuration option. And then move in our final plan nine. And there we go. And we'll reboot the system again. And there it is. Not so interesting on this end now. You can enter FS halt at the command line to shut the system down and then take out the monitor, keyboard, mouse, and boot it back up. It will happily sit there and wait for file server requests. Uh, in the next videos, I'll show how to use the bootable thumb drive to use other computers as diskless terminals and also cover using the program draw term which is a kind of remote desktop app available for Windows, Linux, and other operating systems to access the Plan 9 system. Uh, well, that was a lot of steps, so my next video will probably be a quick demonstration of using the bootable thumb drive to fix any mistakes that might have been made. But until then, have fun.